Artemis Goodwood Cup is always a fascinating contest and might Godolphin be able to have a 1-2 as they did in the Ascot Gold Cup and also in the Goodwood Cup last year. This time around they have got lost in the moment last year's runner-up and Colourvision who took the crown at Ascot. Let's hear from racing manager Simon Crisford. But Colour Vision has taken the race very well. He's in good form. Obviously, it's it's a tough one because uh, you know he's going to be running against horses that he didn't beat very far, um, giving weight to them. So it's not going to be a straightforward race for him to win. But he's in good form and he's established himself as a top flight stare. I think the undulations of the track won't be a problem. If he gets quicker ground than he got at Ascot, I'm sure that would help because that will enable him to demonstrate a good turn of foot, which we know he's got. And lost in the moment, obviously, ran very well in the race last year, if I remember rightly, and certainly acts at the track, doesn't he? Yes, and he, he was slightly unlucky in running last year. He finished a very fast finishing second to opinion poll. But the, I think the trick with him is, is you've got to drop him out and just let him come through tired horses at the finish, and then he, he, that enables him to... Uh, to finish his race with a lot of confidence. Eddie, Steve and I are going to talk about this third race in the series for the long distance performers. So it's the least developed of all the different divisions, but in colour vision, winner of the Ascot Gold Cup, we might have found a contender, Eddie, that's going to stay at the top of the tree. He seems to have improved a lot since last year when he was third in the long distance Kipco race at the Champions Day meeting at Ascot. And that Ascot performance in the Gold Cup was his best yet, a really gutsy effort but he was tactically perfectly positioned by Frankie Tittori throughout. Does the fact that Colourvision has to carry a Group 1 penalty for his Ascot Gold Cup win worry you in the Group 2 Goodwood Cup? Is he significantly better than those horses he beat at Ascot? It does worry me and it means he has to be significantly better. I think penalties are often underestimated by people and uh, it may be that he is. He's, he's progressive, he's improving, and maybe he was disadvantaged by the slow pace at Ascot. We don't know. But you shouldn't underestimate the task. He's got to beat, beat horses who weren't far behind him, and he's got to give them weight this time. Lost in the moment represents Godolphin. Steve, this horse was second to opinion poll in the Goodwood Cup last year. That's probably one of his career best performances. He clearly likes the place. He does. Uh, I think Simon summed it up right. I think he's a horse who... Finding a little bit of trouble almost suits him. I think he's a horse who, he could win one of these when everything lands right for him. You know, when things happen up front and he gets there late. He's, he's probably not quite good enough, but he certainly acts at the course. He was six in the Melbourne Cup. Really terrific performance, probably one of his best, because that's a fiendishly competitive race. He's versatile, he likes the track. I'm a bit with Steve and Simon on this one. I think he's just going to come up short again. but. You know, he's only got a head to find on last year's form because Opinion Poll was second in the Gold Cup. Sadler's Rock was well positioned in the Ascot Gold Cup. He finished third, but Eddie, I feel he was really disadvantaged by how steadily the race was run. Yeah, that meant he pulled hard early and that probably meant he didn't have a lot left for the finish, but he did keep on strongly. I don't think the short straight at Ascot suits him as well as courses with longer straights, such as Doncaster, mm. where he hammered Opinion Poll in the Doncaster Cup last year. And for all its undulations and its idiosyncrasies, Goodwood has a, a long finishing straight of five furlongs from the home turn. And that'll give Saddles Rock a chance to get rolling. Uh, he could be a big player. I'm convinced we didn't see the best of him at Ascot. I think it's uh, quite easy to explain why. He had a rushed, interrupted preparation. He missed his race. They wanted to run him in and they eventually ran him not that long before Ascot to get a race into him. I think the ground was definitely against him. His best form is on uh, a sound surface and it went on the soft side that day and the slow pace will be against a thorough stayer. Now I think he'll need a test at two miles. We are dropping in distance but in a sense I think what he wants is a gallop. I don't think, I think two miles is fine if they go a decent gallop. He would be vulnerable in a slowly run race. One of the absolute stars of what was a superb Royal Ascot was Simonon. He won not just once but twice. Let's hear from his trainer Willie Mullins. He didn't go to Cheltenham very well. I thought he would run very well in the Supreme Novice Hurdle. He finished last. So obviously he travelled bad or something happened to him. So we took a lot more care bringing him to Ascot. And it worked, I think. So, you know, now we know the horse a lot better. And I think that'll be a big help to us coming back to Goodwood. According to the official handicap, he's got about £10-ish to find with the, the Gold Cup form. Do you think that's 
uh, a genuine disparity. Do you, do you, does, that, does that seem about right to you, or do you think he's a bit closer to it's them? It's probably right, yes. His first run for us, he was very keen, and he has been that way. I think jumping has probably helped him to settle, which has improved his flat racing. He ran at Goodman a couple of times and seemed to run pretty well. Is that fair? The track should be OK. Um, I think it's a replica of Mike Gallup, actually. Oh, is it really? Is that right? <laughs> well, it's not unlike it, uh, especially for the... For the for the Goodwood uh, Cup, uh, uh, we go, we start off on a bend, go left, out, turn back right, up the straight. Anyone that's been to my gallop would know it's quite a similar, uh, if it was around gallop, we would go past the stands and into a circuit and back down to where the, and back down the straight again. So basically the race has been set up for you, is what you're I saying? I think so, I think this track was made for us. What a horse Simenon is. He's developed into a high class mm. hurdler and then he came to Royal Ascot and won not just the Ascot Stakes a handicap, but the longest race in Britain on the flat, the Queen Alexander over two mile and six furlong. Proved he was tough, didn't he? And he won both by long margins, putting a lot of distance between him and his rivals in a very short space of time. He's got a turn of foot, I think that's really going to make a difference. And he's going forward fast. I like the way Ryan Moore, his jockey, suggested to Mullins, his trainer, that, it, that they come to this step up in class. The second horse in the Queen Alexandra has run really well in a Group 3 in France since. The third horse has won a big handicap at Ascot since. The form's stacking up really well. He's a horse with a lot of pace for a stayer. I think he'll win. I'm going to go for Colour Vision. I know he was well positioned to win the Ascot Gold Cup, but I suspect he might have won it anyway. I think he could well be the best horse in this division. A horse who was impressive not once, but twice at Ascot. Simenon showed blinding speed for a stayer. I think he'll win. I'm keen on the chance of Sadler's Rock. I think the ground was against him and his preparation was against him. No excuses this time. I think he approved the best of the stayers. Mm -hmm.